man. I'm doing the same thing. How's your quarantine been going and what you've been doing the past the time? Yeah, it's not been bad. Um, you know, we're at school here and we've been practicing every day and uh, working out. So just trying to get back to a normal life. Yeah, and have you gotten back on the ice with some of your teammates? And what does college look like so far, not just hockey-wise, but academically as well? Yeah, it's been a bit different this year, especially my senior year. Um, you know, like classes are all online, which kind of sucks because you don't get that uh, interaction with other students that you would normally get. Um, no, for hockey, we've been skating every day in smaller groups, uh, just limiting like to the restrictions and stuff. But uh, it's been great to get back on the ice with those guys. You know, we haven't been on the ice together since March 15th, I think it was. So it's been good. Yeah, and how are the freshmen looking so far? Good. Um, I think they're going to be big for us this year and step right in there and uh, make an impact for us. That's good to hear. And since you will be a senior this year, what type of leadership do you want to bring to this year's Yellow Jackets team? Yeah, I just want to be a guy who not really too vocally active in the room, but mainly leading with my, with my play on the ice and trying to bring that um, championship leadership that we've had here for the past uh, few seasons uh, in the Atlantic and um, trying to bring us back to another Atlantic championship this year. And what do you know what the season will look like in Atlantic hockey? Because I heard that the Big Ten announced that they're coming back sometime in mid-November. Hockey East tends to play the year. Have you heard anything what the Atlantic hockey might look like? Yeah, so um, just hearing rumors from, you know, you hear it through the grapevine from different guys around the league. But I think it's going to be like a November 20th start with, uh, I think, like four um, out-of-conference games against teams in your area. And then I think uh, like 2022 game in conference schedule. So, you know, it, uh, it's good. It's just able to play hockey again, which is going to be the best part about it. Yeah, definitely. It will be weird without fans because I was just assumed that they probably won't allow any for this year. Yeah, it'll definitely be different atmosphere, um, especially in our rink. We have a lot of kids who come to the game, so they, uh, they make some noise for us. And, you know, seeing like students in the stands, it'll, it'll be just a little bit different this year, especially, you know, life is a little bit different right now as well. Yeah, what are your expectations for your team this year and what role do you want to play in that? Yeah, no, for expectations this year, you know, it's uh, nothing short of a championship once again. I think we've kind of molded this this program into something that is uh, really recognizable around college hockey and um, a lot of people are seeing us as a, you know, like a top 15, top 20 contender and for myself uh, is to just give my team the best, best chance uh, to win each day and each game and, um, you know, be that senior guy to, to just backstop them and help them when, when we need, we need to stop. And I want to start off talking about before you went to AIC, you're from Brampton, Ontario. How did you start playing hockey and falling in love, in love with the sport? Yeah. So, um, you know, growing up in Canada, it's uh you're going to skate before you can walk most of the time. But um, my, my dad, uh, he was a goalie and uh, he kind of got me on skates as, as early as he could. And then um, put me in the basement with goalie equipment on and I never flinched when he chopped uh, pucks or balls at me. So he was like, you know what, you'd be perfect for goalie if you want to play it and kind of just started my path that way. Did you ever play a game as a player, not as a goalie? Uh, no, like in like Timbits hockey, it's called when you're yeah. younger in, in Ontario. But um, I did play roller hockey growing up as a, as a defenseman. So that was pretty fun. And I think it's kind of helped me with my like puck playing abilities. Yeah. What made you want to play goalie, especially since it's very hard position. I played it one game like back in Pee Wee, and it was not something I wanted to do ever again. Just all those pucks hitting you. Yeah, no. Um, a lot of it had to do with my dad. Uh, he, he was a goalie, like I said, growing up and, um, you know, he never got to see his dream like, come into a reality of being able to play a higher level of hockey just because his dad got sick and he, uh, he had to go work. But um, a lot of it has to do with that inspiration, but also just I, I watched guys like Curtis Joseph, Joseph growing up and they were a big impact on me in my, in my hockey career. Yeah, and who was your favorite player growing up, and what part of their game did you like? I know you just mentioned Curtis Joseph. Was that who it was? 
Um, it was a mix of a, a bunch of different guys, but Curtis Joseph, definitely from the youngest youngest of ages, um, just seeing him because he was in Toronto when I was growing up as a kid. But uh, guys like Tim Thomas as well. Uh, I know not many people would say that just based on how he's played. But um, for me, it's kind of a, a role model of mine where he's worked so hard to get to a certain level and like keep battling, especially at the age he got into the National Hockey League. So um, guys like that. Oh, yeah, I love Tim Thomas. I'm a big Bruins fan, so he was a okay. huge reason why they won the Cup back in 2011. And hearing his story and how the much how much adversity he had to go through just to make the NHL and just to make a college roster. So that's definitely a guy I would look up to as well. Yeah, for sure. No, he's um, – like seeing his – just hearing his story, right? He – I don't think he got into the National Hockey League until he was about 30 or something like that. Yeah. And just – he traveled to, I think it was – four different continents playing hockey or something like that. It, it's crazy. Yeah. Do you try to model any part of his game? Like I know he was kind of an unconventional goalie. Yeah, it's, I would say that's kind of my style. Um, it's kind of a do anything to stop the puck kind of style. Right. And you see it a lot more, I think in today's game where like we just witnessed with Anton, Anton Hudobin and his style was kind of the same way as Tim Thomas, where you don't really have those bit of, strictly butterfly guys or strictly stand-up strictly hybrid guys you see it's a mix of everything now so yeah and uh, you played for the Cooper Cougars in the OJHL what do you remember from that experience and how did it help you prepare for college hockey yeah Colbert was an unbelievable experience for me um, you know I call it my second home now uh, just the town and the people I've met there but the hockey was incredible we were playing in I would say one of the best uh, divisions in all of Canadian junior hockey in the East division. And each night you were, it was a different rivalry game and it was so fun to play. And I think a lot, a lot of it kind of relates to Atlantic hockey. It's a kind of that muck style of hockey where um, it's going to be a low scoring game and there's going to be fewer chances, but um, you know, it kind of prepared me where um, we're just, being incredible like leader off the ice, but also incredible leader on the ice with your play. Yeah, and during your time there, you won an RBC Cup back in 2017. Talk about that championship and what it means to you today. Yeah, that um, that memory comes up in my mind at least once a day. It's just something that I always look back on as um, I think kind of a changing point in my in my hockey career, and kind of people kind of started to recognize me as a as a great goalie for, for junior hockey and um, kind of got my start at AIC through that. But that whole experience winning that national championship, uh, we had such a great group of guys who kind of who bonded together and being able to win it in Coburg was, was so surreal and having to be able to celebrate with our fans after. Um, it's something you'll never forget. And um, I know one day, like, I'll look back on that on that game as a, as truly a life changing moment for myself. And talk about your recruitment process. What made you want to go to AIC? Yeah, so um, I didn't really have any uh, Division One offers or commitments till after that national championship game. AIC had been talking to me a bit before before the RBC, but they wanted to see what I was going to do in there. Um, you know, it was kind of quick after I, I visited AIC and I loved what Coach Lang was doing with the program at the time and um, how he was kind of changing the culture around the team and bringing it into a winning winning program. And from there on, it was, you know, I, I want to be a Yellow Jacket and I want to kind of be part of the change here and uh, bring it to that championship mentality program. What was the biggest adjustment you had to make after playing your first few games as a freshman? Yeah, I think it was just being able to calm myself down in the net. Um, tendency of chasing players, chasing pucks. And, you know, teams look back on that and through film and stuff. And I think I really had to adjust to that and be able to just calm myself down and be more patient in the net. And I think it's, it's helped me out here through my uh, college career. Now, during your freshman year, you beat Niagara in the Atlantic Hockey quarterfinals, eliminating them in double overtime. Talk about that game and winning your first Atlantic Hockey series in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that was unbelievable. I think 
it was AIC's first Division I um, playoff win as well in the series. And, you know, we, there was so much emotion around that, just the way the program was before that and how we kind of changed it that year and kind of started turning it into a winning program, especially down the, the final stretch of the season. Um, you know, we had a little bit of adversity in that game two as well. We were up 3-1. They tied it at three, and then we won it in double overtime. So it was pretty cool, and especially being at home as well. Um, we had quite a few fans there for that game. So it was, a, it was definitely a moment that we would look back on as a kind of a, a changer for our program. You then lost to Canisius in the next round. What did you take away from that series? And that how did that help you for next year going into a season where you guys made the national tournament? Yeah, I think the biggest thing we took away from that team, from that from that playoff series was – um, you, you got to bring it every game. Um, we are kind of a young team, a lot of freshmen and uh, sophomores at that point. And um, just being able to play a team that, like Kinesis, who who's a very good structurally team, and they're really well coached. And um, we kind of let our guard down in game one, just wasn't expecting it. And we kind of got blown out of the rink. But um, I think it helped us and helped mature us too as well. Now, during your sophomore year, you unfortunately got hurt. Talk about that injury and how did you physically and mentally try to come back from that during that year? Yeah, it um, definitely, definitely was a, a step back for me in my hockey career. I, I had never really had an injury like that where you know, I was forced to miss a good part of the season. Um, but for me mentally, it was definitely, it definitely made me stronger. Um, just being able to kind of be on my own and uh, kind of think for, think for, not think for myself, but kind of just take some time for myself and be able to look back on that as a, as another like changing experience in my life where I was able to come back stronger. And uh, I think even uh, mentally stronger too. And I think it helped me a lot last year and um, you know, the training staff was great for me and, being and I had a lot of the support from the uh, from the team as well. Yeah, your team did win the Atlantic Hockey that year. What was it like to watch your team achieve that goal and uh, go to their first NCAA tournament? Yeah, no, it was uh, it was great to see them do that. You know, you you want to be on on the ice for that, but um, as a team guy and being on the sidelines, you want to support them as much as you can, and um, you know. We got we we did what we were set out to do. I think in the past, and um, you know, I I was there for that run with being in the stands, just supporting them, and it was great to see. But you know, um, it sucks on the other hand not being on the ice and being dressed up to, to celebrate with them. I also want to talk about that major upset your team pulled against St. Cloud State in the tournament. I remember watching that game. I was very surprised because St. Cloud State um, got upset the year prior, so I thought they were going to show up, but they didn't. You guys outplayed them, and you won that game. Talk about what it was like watching your team pull off that major upset and going into the next game in the tournament. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I was uh, I was back here at AIC doing my rehab and um, watched the game that night with my roommate. And, you know, to see them do, to see them pull off an upset like that, it kind of gave you goosebumps. Um, but I wasn't really surprised. I knew our coaching staff would uh, program us the right way to be able to to beat a team like St. Cloud. And I thought we were really defensively sound and, um, you know, didn't give up too many chances in a way. And we kind of capitalized on the mistakes they made. And that's how usually it happens, right, in the playoffs. Like, it's the little things that when you when you big games. Now, playing in your first few games back in your junior year, how did you mentally get back into game playing shape and facing those big shots, especially since you didn't play a game for a couple of months before that? Yeah, it was definitely uh, challenging a bit, especially I think my first game was at Mercyhurst. And um, I think it was my first game in over 365 days, which was kind of tough because I mean, you can only do so much in practice with timing and um, adjusting to different things on the fly, right? But, um, you know, I worked hard with uh, with my goalie coaches back home with Dan Stewart and uh, Dave DeLucky and uh, Matt Boydie. They did a great job preparing me for, for the last season. And, 
being able to get back to the form I was in my freshman year. What's it like to play in Atlanta hockey, and what's your team's secret for staying so successful in that conference? Yeah, no, Atlanta hockey is uh, it's it's a tough conference to play in. Um, you know, if you look at the standings, each of the last four years, I would say to, uh, number one to number six is probably like less than five points away from each other, and um, every weekend, anybody can beat anybody, and that's the that's the thing I like about Atlantic hockey, and it's it's the thing I think it separates us from the other conferences in college hockey. Um, for us, AIC, I think it's the way we're coached. And I think it's, it has a lot to do with the guys we have in this room who, you know, we, we saw where the program was and how far it's come. And we really want to just keep changing uh, the identity of AIC hockey and keep changing it to a, a winning culture. You split time with Zach Hires, Skog during your junior year. What was he like as a goalie partner and how did he help you um, competing against him every single practice? Yeah, no, he was a, he was a great kid and, uh, and a true competitor. And um, I think we pushed each other a lot, especially through my f three years here with him. Um, you know, we, we both leaned on each other where we both had injuries that set us back in what we wanted to do, but um, it kind of made us stronger coming back the next time and being able to battle with each other and practice and keep fighting for the role. And, you know, we were good friends off the ice and um, I kept it loose. We were roommates on the, on the road as well a few times too. So it was pretty fun with him. And your season was last year was cut short due to COVID. How did you find out? What was your team's reaction to that news, especially the seniors knowing that they played their final collegiate game? Yeah, that was, that was tough for us. Um, you know, we won the Atlantic again last year. And um, I think it was the Thursday. We were supposed to play our first playoff game on the Friday. And, you know, we got told to stay home from practice. And um, a few hours later, we got the call that the Atlantic was canceled. And they were just going to do the, the NCAA tournament. And then a few hours later, it was that was canceled. And I think it was kind of like kind of unfinished business for us. Um, I thought we had a lot of potential last year and a team I think that could have possibly went to the Frozen Four and made some noise in it. Um, we, had, we had a very strong team. and It was hard to see those seniors not be able to get a chance to do that. We had a lot of good guys and a, a, lot, of senior, a lot of seniors who are playing now, uh, pro. Um, it, it's just tough. And I know if they could, they'd be back here this year battling it out with us again. And one question I want to ask you is, who's the toughest player you've ever had to face in college hockey? I saw that you played UMass a couple of times. Was it Kale McCarr or any one of those guys on that team? Um, I would say, honestly, uh, Jack Dugan off uh, Providence. You know, he's got a heck of a release, and he can, he can put it into a corner that you wouldn't even think it was there. And he's, uh, he's got speed, and he's a total NHL package, right? Yeah, definitely. And being a goalie, you play in a lot of different situations. What's the best chant you've ever heard on yourself? And what's your favorite road arena to play in? Oh, um, actually, my freshman year, my first ever minutes in college hockey were at Penn State, actually. Oh, wow. And <laughs> that was that was so fun. It was so fun to be a part of. Um, funny story. First, I went to go uh, play the puck behind the net. And as I was doing that, lost my stick right in front of their student section and just fell on the ice and they were just giving it to me. But I would think the best chant I've had is um, at RIT. I have a uh, stitch from the movie Lilo and Stitch on my helmet yeah. and they had a whiteboard and they wrote uh, Ohana means you suck on it. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. Uh, that was actually my first game too. But in our conference, I would say RIT is definitely the, the best like place to play. Does that motivate you? Because I feel like if I was in that situation, I would love it just having the crowd against me and just trying to prove them all wrong. Yeah, for me, it's a little like I like to have fun with them too. If I'm skating in that corner, I'll uh, I'll kind of give it back to them or kind of laugh with them. But um, no, it, it brings a unique experience that you wouldn't get anywhere else. And um, it just it makes you love the game even more, I would think. Yeah, I went to one game at the Mullen Center where UMass plays, and that student section was very crazy, and they were chanting at the UConn goalie when I was at the game. 
I don't know if you've ever played there, but is that a pretty big student section as well? Yeah, no, I've uh, we've played there, but I wasn't at the two times we've played there. But um, no, it's pretty crazy there too, especially uh, when when they had those big teams like the one with Kill McCarr and the one they had last year as well was pretty good. Um, and their fans travel as well too, which is pretty crazy. And you know, um, it's been good when we get to play them. And hopefully this year uh, with COVID, and we hopefully we can get there again. Now, what is ARC's fans like at, at your arena? Um, it's a bit hard for us. Just the uh, fact we have a rink off campus. And um, we do play at Mass Mutual Center, which is the AHL rink. So it does hold, I think it's like 8,000 seats. Um, I want to say we got like 1,000 in a game, which fills up pretty good on one side. And um, it's pretty nice because it's a lot of young kids from the Springfield community. And, you know, you know kids, they can bring a lot of noise to the rink and it kind of amps us up a bit too, which is really nice to have. Now we're now in the segment of the podcast. I like to call five questions that have nothing to do with hockey. My first one is who has the best style on the team? Because I think it's yourself. Cause I was looking at some of the headshots. I love the bow tie look that you were pulling off. Thank you. Um, no, but I would, uh, I'd have to say uh, Tobias Flatteby. He's uh, he's my roommate as well. And um, no, he's got some pretty good style. If you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Um, I think it'd have to be Tom Brady. Um, just his work ethic and everything he brings on any given night. Um, I'd love to pick his brain for a bit. What do you think you'll eat? Because I know Tom Brady has a very specific diet. Um, so, like, I'm pretty, plant, uh, pretty on a plant-based diet right now. So, um, I do – agree with the TB12 method and everything he does. A lot of my summer workouts are based around bands and stuff. So try to, it, it helped me a lot through my injury as well, which was pretty cool. Um, reading his book and the struggles he had with, uh, with knee injuries. Um, now I know a lot of goalies have a lot of superstitions. Do you have any superstitions before a game? I do. And if I said them all, we'd probably be here all night, <laughs> but um it's a lot of just listening to the same music, same songs before every game, um, you know, doing the same stretches. If we're on a roll, I'm wearing the same bow tie every game. I'm not changing, not changing the socks. So I'm pretty superstitious when it comes to, to, to all that stuff. Now, what music do you like and what do you listen to before a game? Uh, so I'm a big country fan. Um, and my playlist before the game is probably, uh, I think it's like a lot of Eric Church. And also, like, I'll throw in some Mike Studd in there. Uh, Mike Studd, a rapper, you know, his story is pretty unique. But it's a lot of that, but mainly, like, hard rock kind of country music. And what's your favorite TV show you would like to binge? Oh, it would always be Seinfeld. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Favorite episode? Um, probably have to say either Festivus or The oh, Super yeah. Nazi. Two classics. <laughs> Now back to some college hockey questions. Now, what advice would you give young kids trying to pursue Division One college hockey? I'd say, go to a rink, go to the gym, or go to even to the classroom every day, with the with the mindset of getting one percent better each day. Just uh, be a true professional, and always always work on the little things that you need to 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 help yourself. Now, is there any shout outs you would like to make to any teammates, friends, or family members? Um, yeah, I'll give a shout out to my to both my parents, uh, my brother, my best friend Justin, and my girlfriend Brittany. Nice. Now, one thing we do with all of our guests is we have them introduce themselves when the podcast starts. So I was just wondering if you could say hi, I'm Stefano from AIC, and you're listening to College Hockey Talk. Okay. Hi, I'm Stefano Durante from AIC, and you're listening to College Hockey Talk. Thank you so much, Stefano, for coming on. I appreciate it. I wish you all the best next year with AIC and stay safe. And hopefully I'll catch a game soon when I can. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Uh, stay safe and I uh, hope my Leafs beat the Bruins next year. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Have a nice day. Thank you so much for coming on.